What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about exercise and your brain. Okay, now not just your brain but your overall mental health. Now we used to think of exercise as it was just kind of a vanity thing and then come to find out there's all these health benefits to exercise that make sense in terms of fat loss, muscle building, insulin sensitivity, uh, cardiovascular disease, cancer. These things are pretty well known. But we're also finding out a large body of literature as exercise relates to your mental health and your cognitive function. So if we look at the literature and we look at, for example, observational studies, what we see is that people who have lower rates of depression tend to exercise more and that people who have higher rates of depression tend to exercise less. Now, it's important to remember that correlation isn't necessarily causation. For example, for anyone who's ever been depressed, I, I haven't, but I've talked to several people who have, um, you have trouble just getting out of bed. So the potential that it could be reverse causation is also true, meaning it could be that uh, exercise is not necessarily improving symptoms of depression or the lack of exercise doesn't make depression worse or increase the incidence of depression. It could be that depressed people are just less likely to exercise. So that is also a possibility. But when we look at the randomized controlled trials where people get exercise or some other intervention, you can't really do a placebo with exercise unfortunately, what we do see is a reduction in the depression symptoms. So it does seem to be something there, and that seems to extend across multiple different types of exercise. And there were studies looking at, like for example, volleyball or basketball, running, tai chi, resistance exercise, aerobic exercise. It seems that all of these different sorts of exercise have benefits for symptoms of depression. Now, to me, this makes sense in terms of my own personal experience and people I've talked to. For the most part, when you go, even if you feel bad, if you go and you work out hard for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it is, most people don't leave there saying, man, I really wish I hadn't done that exercise. It kind of gets you back on the right foot. Even if you didn't feel like doing it, once you do it, you feel better. And I think that might help you get started down a track of once you've had that one productive thing, you can start having more productive things. So it's important to point out that my personal experience, again, is when I exercise, I actually feel uh, better and I feel like my mental clarity is better. Now, I used to think that was probably just placebo, right? I really enjoy exercise and so it makes sense that if it's something I enjoy, that might mentally make me feel better. But actually now we're getting evidence that exercise, even resistance exercise, can improve cognition and cognitive processing. So there's several trials in not just people who are cognitively impaired, but also people who are healthy cognition wise. And in both sets of people, we see improvements in cognition. And in healthy people, we actually see improvements in short term memory in those that resistance train. Furthermore, there's some evidence that resistance training can actually improve high level cognitive functioning as it relates to athletics. So there's actually some evidence that perhaps athletes should engage in a say light resistance training. There's some evidence that athletes might want to engage in some light resistance training the day that they're going to do their sport because there's some emerging evidence that this can help them with their cognitive processing and their skills of a sport and might actually make them less prone to injury because they're able to kind of cognitively process what they're doing a little bit better. Again, right now that's razor thin evidence and it's only been proposed as a mechanism, but I think it's pretty interesting and what I find really interesting 
is the long-term benefits of exercise on say depression and cognitive function. I mean, they don't shock me that much because if you think about some of the negative effects, um, if you think about some of the diseases or the impairments of cognition, what do we usually see? We usually see uh, insulin resistance in the brain or we see uh, re increased reactive oxygen species. Well, what does exercise help with? Exercise helps with all those things. But I was surprised to see that there seemed to be short-term acute benefits to exercise on cognition. So what's the moral of the story? Well, if you're feeling depressed, if you're having trouble concentrating, if you're having any problems with cognition, a relatively easy thing you can do is exercise. Now, I'm probably not going to have to sell any of you guys on this because if you're watching my channel, you're probably into exercise, but maybe your family members, that could help convince them to get into exercise. And here's the really cool thing. The dosage needed to see these benefits is pretty darn small. Uh, most of these studies looked at about 30 minutes of exercise. And in the shortest duration, they looked at 10 minutes. And I think the longest was actually only 45 minutes. So you don't need a huge amount of exercise to see these benefits. Even getting out and going for a brisk, really brisk 30 minute walk may improve some of these markers of cognitive function and symptoms of depression. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, click the links in the description, check out some of my educational books, as well as our nutritional coaching app, Carbon Diet Coach. Or if you need help with exercise programming, you can check out our workout builder, also linked in the description. Or if you want to learn even more, take my educational courses. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great one, and I will catch you next week.